This problem comes from Oxford University's maths admissions test. The function y equals x squared times ln x, defined for x positive, satisfies which of these? So part a, x times dy dx is 2y plus x squared. b, dy dx is positive for all x. c, the second derivative doesn't equal 0 for all x. Or d, all of the above. Now, one thing I will point out, this problem comes from the 2006 paper where the syllabus was slightly different. So if you're looking at this and going, oh my gosh, I don't know what LNX even is, or I don't know what the derivative of LNX is, don't worry. This wouldn't actually occur or appear in a paper um, you know, in the, this year's syllabus um, because this isn't required on the syllabus. However, if you have seen how to differentiate these sorts of things, it's still a pretty cool problem. Let's dive in. These are all to do with the derivative, so maybe I should just calculate the derivative of this. So y prime is, if I just use the, the product rule, so this is 2x times ln x plus x squared times 1 over x. And if I just simplify and factor out the x, that's x multiplied by 2 ln x plus 1, like so. Okie dokie, we want to see if uh, any of these are true. Well, we could look at any of these. I'm looking at B in particular. That looks quite interesting. I've got dy dx here. Is that positive for all x? The answer is no, because, well, x is certainly positive for all x, because we're only looking at when x is positive. But this guy here, 2 ln x plus 1, that doesn't have to be positive for all x, because I know if I draw an ln x graph, when x is a very small real number, positive real number, ln x is a very, very negative number. So if I make x something like e to the minus 10, this thing here will be minus 20 altogether with the 2 in front. And then plus 1 is just minus 19. So that will be a negative number. Because e to, uh, if I multiply that by e to the minus 10, that will still keep it negative. So b is definitely not true. And so therefore, with that, I also get d. And so therefore, the answer must be A or C. And it's actually not too difficult to see that it must be A. If I come back to this equation here and multiply through by x, I get x times y prime equals 2x squared ln x plus x squared. And x squared ln x is just y. So that's 2y plus x squared. And so therefore, this must be true. And since there can only be one correct answer, it must be A. But let's just quickly check anyway that the second derivative isn't zero for all x. Um, let's just differentiate this again. And well, actually, it's almost obvious because if the second derivative was zero for all x, that would mean that y is a linear function. But if that doesn't convince you, let's just differentiate it again. y double prime, if I use the product rule here, is 2 ln x plus 2. And then plus uh, the derivative of x is just 1, like so. And so that's 2 ln x plus 3 which definitely is not zero for all x. It's maybe zero for one value of x, but it's not equal to zero for all x. So the answer is definitely A.